Brothers and sisters in Christ, friends and neighbors, welcome to this service of worship. Please do not be in a hurry to leave as we have a wonderful lunch prepared for you. And in addition to that, as you leave the sanctuary this afternoon, there's a little gift that will be given to you, a blessing. We were blessed and privileged to hear the beautiful singing and voice of Marlise McCants, and she has a CD called Heaven, and as you leave the service, you'll be blessed with one of those CDs that you can take with you and play in your car, play at home. I've been playing it in the car as I travel, and I find out traffic doesn't bother me, trains coming in front of me don't bother me, nothing's bothering me, because we've got this glorious and wonderful heavenly music from Marlies McCants. So as you leave, you're going to be blessed with one of these CDs. Let us come before God and join in the call to worship. Come to God who is rich in mercy. We will come to God who is full of grace. Praise the Lord who invites all to come. Our hymn is more about Jesus. It's on the back of your program there, your uh, order of service. So please stand if you're able and sing more about Jesus. our Heavenly Father that Jesus is seated at the right hand on that throne 
And that Jesus is the one who does make intercession for us on our behalf as a great high priest. Even times we're not aware of it. The Lord Jesus is in prayer for me and for you. So we thank you, our Heavenly Father, for this great assurance of the one who is on the throne. And we thank you for the great assurance he is the Prince of Peace. For he desires peace in the world. He desires people to be at peace with the Father. And he desires that neighbor will dwell in peace with one another. So we thank you. He is the Prince of Peace. And we do invite his presence here. And we do acknowledge his glorious, glorious name in this service of worship. Let each and every one have that true desire as we sang to want to know more about Jesus, to want to have more love from Jesus, to want to have more grace from Jesus. Pour forth thy grace upon us in this service of worship, for we will give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory. You may be seated, and I'll invite our little choir to come forward. Might be a little choir, but it's a powerful choir. <laughs> to Jesus. Reach out to Jesus. Reach out to Jesus. Reach out to Jesus. He's reaching out to you. And that's kind of a big ending there. So you're now the choir. You will join us. It's real simple. Three times. Reach out to Jesus. Reach out to Jesus.
maybe you can join us the next time and come right up front and be part of the choir. <laughs> So it's my privilege to introduce to you our speaker. Our speaker is Reverend John Hyder. And Reverend John Hyder is the on-call chaplain at Lima Memorial Hospital. So we do welcome John to this pulpit lectern as he's going to bring to us a message from the Word of God. Welcome, John. Thank you. Thank you, Ken, and thank you for your hospitality and welcoming me to be with you all today. When we're done, you may not invite me back. No, I don't. Uh, we're going to look at the very last chapter of the Gospel of John today, the 21st chapter. And in this piece of this, it's, the, it's an after Easter story. It's the last time in the Gospel of John that Jesus is together with his friends before the ascension. And in the middle of this little last time gathering, almost the last conversation he has is with Simon Peter, probably the number one leader of his disciples. And as they have finished with breakfast, Jesus says to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Simon replies to Jesus, Lord, you know that I love you. And then again, Jesus says to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Simon replies to, to Jesus, Lord, you know that I love you. And then a third time, Jesus says to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Jesus and Simon replies, Lord, you know that I love you. And each time Jesus asks, do you love me? And Peter replies, he gives him a command. Then feed my sheep, care for my lambs, tend my flock. By the third time, Peter's a little upset. His feelings are hurt. Twice I've answered. Now why a third time? This is the gospel of the Lord for us to hear today. Amen. I've been doing this for almost 50 years and I've never been fond of being tied to a pulpit. So if I get out of hand, just let me know. Don't want to make you uncomfortable. I have 13 grandchildren and 10 of them are girls. Prayers appreciated. Three of them live with me. Okay. Well, one of them is now off on her own. She's lived with me for a number of years. Now she's the mother of our very first great grandchild, another delightful little girl. Uh, but the other two still live with us, and they're teenagers. Prayers really appreciated. I listen to them talk about love. They love everything. And if you, and you know, sometimes I'm a little bit confused about it. They love this taco place. <laughs> they see an outfit that somebody is wearing, and oh, I love that. New little clothes on Meridian, the, uh, the great-grandbaby great who's going to be a year old next week. There's this outfit. We're going to have a birthday party. So all these clothes and things are coming into the house to be given to this one-year-old on her birthday. Oh, we love that. That is so cute. I love it. I love it. And I watch television with my wife. <laughs> she loves the... She, she real, I said it. She loves HGTV and the renovation shows. And you know the great reveals? These people come in, I love this space. Oh, I love that fireplace. I love the backyard. We throw that word around all the time. And it means something different in every context. So is it any wonder 
as we sit down and meet with people who are wanting to get married, that we're confused about what love actually means. Now the ancient Greeks, the world in which Jesus lived, and the world in which John and the other Bible writers, New Testament writers lived, they didn't have that problem. Because they had a word for that. A different word for each one of those things. I love that outfit. They got a word for that. I've, I, you know, I love my grandchildren. There's a word for that. Different from the first, but there's a word for it. I don't love the taco place. I love Chinese food. There's a word for that. I love my wife with all my heart. There is a word for that. Each one is different. There is no confusion. The problem is we are confused because we got one, love, one word that we translate all those other things into English. They all come in as love. They all come in as love. What's that got to do with this story today? In the English Bible, depending on the translation that you use, the word love appears between 550 and 700 times. It appears 57 times in the Gospel of John alone. It is an important word. And if you look through, especially the New Testament, that word that comes into English as love represents two words in Greek, almost exclusively. There is a love that talks about the bond between friends. The tight spiritual and emotional bond that you may have with your very best friend. That word is philos in Greek. If you go out to Pennsylvania, there's a city that takes the Greek word for city, Delphos or Delphia, and plies it together, glues it together with that word philos, and you've got Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Then there is another word that appears again and again and again in the New Testament. It is agape. Are you good with Greek? Agape. You may have heard this before. Agape is that all-encompassing spiritual love that God has for his creation. It is the love that Jesus has come into the world to share with each and every one of us. It is the love that in John's version of the Last Supper, Jesus commands his disciples again and again, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. The world will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. It is agape love, a divine, all-encompassing love. And it's not just a warm feeling, it's a love that calls for action. You act on it. Love one another and bear fruit in the world. In almost every instance, and in fact, every instance in the Gospel of John, when the word love in English appears in Jesus' mouth, it is always agape love, except this one time. Mm -hmm. Have you read this? I, I saw a Greek New Testament on your desk. You know what I'm going to say. So, you're, you're with me. Okay, I'm not the... Uh, and I'm not, here we go, here we go. Jesus, Jesus and Simon Peter are there together after having breakfast, after they've been fishing and all that. And Jesus turns to Simon and he says, Do you love me? Agape. And Peter responds to Jesus, You know that I love you. Philos. Jesus says, do you love me with that all-encompassing divine love that I have come to bring to you and through you to the whole world? And Peter responds, Jesus, you know I am your best friend. We don't see that in English because we're confused about what love is. Second time, Jesus says, Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me, agape? And Peter responds, you know that I love you, Philos. I am your very best friend. 
Come on, Jesus, we've gone around this. Why are we doing this again? And here's the kicker. Simon Peter is not getting it. He knows the difference in the language. But for some reason, he at this point is not able to come to that point where Jesus is calling him to be. Do you love with that all-encompassing spiritual divine love? The love that leads us to action. The love that will lead you to take care of the flock that Jesus leaves behind. Do you love like that? And Simon, he's not stupid. He's like your kids when you ask them, have you done your homework? <laughs> and they don't want to tell you. And they divert. Peter is being like a politician who has asked a question that he doesn't want to get tied down with the answer and diverts to a different subject. Change the subject. I'm your best friend. You know that. You know I'm your best friend. Now here, to me, is the most amazing piece in this part of, in this passage in Scripture. Because the third time, Jesus says, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Fill us. Are you really my best friend? And at this point, Simon who's a little flustered and not knowing what to do, he is, he is really offended and hurt. Lord, you know everything. You know who I am. I am your best friend, fill us. And Jesus said, take up the mission, tend my flock. It's a shame we can't see that in English. Because there is real power in this story. As we gather in Lent, a season that calls upon you and I as disciples of Jesus Christ, people who claim his name, who claim to be Christian and to live a life of discipleship, we are called in this season of Lent to be reflective and to think about our own spiritual nature and acknowledge our own shortcoming and sinfulness, the things that stand between us and the love of God, that stand between us in full discipleship of our Lord Jesus in, the, in our lives today. And I don't know about you, uh, I am more aware of where I fall short than anybody who knows me, even Dottie, who's extremely perceptive. I am very well of how short I fall. And I don't know how I would feel if Jesus suddenly appeared to me and said, John, do you love me? Agape. I don't know what I would say in response. But here is the amazing thing, the grace moment in this story. Peter can only come so far. And finally Jesus, after twice trying to bring him further, Jesus takes a step back to meet Peter where he is. Are you really my best friend? In, in our reflection, in our searching of our hearts and souls, I think it is really important to remember, as shown in this scripture, wherever we are, the journey to find Jesus is not very great because he has already come to meet us where we stand right now. I've always liked this little last chapter of the Gospel of John. I like the way John talks about love and the way Jesus uses love and explains it as our sole purpose on earth. We are not called to judge one another. We are not called as disciples in Jesus to be the gatekeepers and decide who is in the kingdom of God and who is out. Mm -hmm. We are called to love. To bear the fruit of love. And if not able to be the agape person always, at least to be Philos, the best friend on the level of Jesus Christ and his good buddy Simon Peter. We can do that. We can do it. And there's a word for that. 
It's called grace. Now may God bless you as we go from here to share his love and do his work in this world. Amen. Okay. Thank you, John, for that fine message. And we will now turn our attention to our closing hymn, which is Lift High the Cross. It's number 371. 371. Please stand if you're able. Keep your hymnal in your hand there and go to 599 in the back and just hold on to that 599 and keep it open. Now with that open and you've got it in your hand, just, just kind of close your eyes there. I want to take you to the cross of Jesus. Now you're either on the right or the left of Jesus on a cross because we all have sinned. We're all transgressors. We all have fallen short. So there's one that will say a prayer to the Lord Jesus as he is crucified next to Christ. And let this be your prayer and let this be my prayer. Let this be the prayer of all believers. And let us sing together 599. You can open your eyes now. <laughs> Jesus. 